the walkie-talkie. I have a walkie-talkie. Devin also has a walkie-talkie. You can wave to the live stream now if you want to. Hi! Everyone watching at home. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, so I have one. Devin has one. You have one. You have these for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're investigating in the dark in a haunted house in the middle of the night. This might be your first time investigating. You're going to have fun tonight, hopefully. This is a really cool event, and I'm so glad that you're here. But if you feel uncomfortable at any point, I don't want you to keep feeling uncomfortable. If you need to take a break, take a break. We're going to be turning the lights out outside, except the string lights above the benches where we were just sitting. So if you need to take a breather and sit out there, please do that. If you need to go outside and smoke a cigarette, you can do that as well. But there is a lock on the gate, so just let me know, and I'll open the, door for the, open the gate for you. Now, if you need us to come get you at any point, we're happy to do that. You can always walk in. Everyone can hear you on the walkie-talkie, just so you're aware. But Devin or I are happy to come get you at any point if you need us to. I've never actually had to do that, but tonight could be the night, and that's okay. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, step outside, let us know if you need anything. Okay. The other reason that you're giving these walkie-talkies, and the most important reason, is so that you know when it's time to rotate and where to go next. You're going to hear my voice come through on this walkie-talkie every 25 minutes. The first time you hear my voice come through, it will startle you. It'll be the scariest moment of tonight when my voice comes through that walkie-talkie. I promise it will scare you more than anything else, and then you'll kind of get used to it. But I'm going to tell you that it's time to rotate, and I'm going to tell you where to go next, so you'll lead your own group to the next location. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Okay. Does everyone know how to use a walkie-talkie? Okay, great. It's come to my attention lately. Not everybody does. Okay, next up, everybody's going to get a flashlight. So each group is going to get two flashlights. So both of you are going to have one. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. And then this group gets two. Probably the most scared person of every group should have a flashlight. There you go. Okay, so every group is getting two flashlights so that they can see where they're going. You're going to be in the dark in a haunted house. Uh, I don't want you to trip over any stairs. You don't want to trip over any stairs. We have very antique furniture here, so use those flashlights. You need to be able to see where you're going. You can also use the flashlights, though, to communicate with the spirits. So a tip for you with these flashlights, if you want to. I gave everybody two flashlights that are different colors. That's on purpose. You can establish some rules here tonight. We're looking for intelligent communication. We're hoping that this, this equipment goes off, but we're not hoping that it just goes off willy-nilly. We're hoping it goes off when you want it to and the way that you want it to. So establish some rules. You can set down your flashlights, your two flashlights next to each other. Maybe the blue one means yes and the black one means no. You'll establish that rule out loud. right? So you'll explain to the ghost how it's going to work. Blue means yes, black means no. Then you'll ask them some yes or no questions. You'll ask the spirits to dim the light, to make it turn off or on, and you'll see if they can respond to you using those rules that you've established. So ask yes or no questions. Try the flashlight trick. Another thing you can do with these flashlights is you can use them as what's called a trigger object. You can ask a spirit to touch them. You can put the flashlight down on the floor, on a sofa. You can ask a spirit to roll it toward you, roll it away from you. Um, don't ask them to knock it off a table. Maybe we'll try to keep the equipment working. Uh, but ask them to roll it toward you or roll it away from you. See if you can get some evidence there. That would be pretty neat. And we've had some success with it. So use those flashlights to see where you're going and to communicate. Okay. Next up, what is this? EMF meter, yes. Uh, so this is your most basic piece of investigative equipment. If you ever do another investigation, you will be given one of these. This is measuring electromagnetic frequency, EMF. Basically, this is measuring energy. Now, this is a really simple piece of equipment. I'm going to hand it to you when it's already on, so you don't have to do anything with this piece of equipment. The green light means that it's on. This is your base reading. Now, what you're looking for with this is a spike. You're hoping that it, when, it's a, when it's detecting energy, when it's detecting EMF, that it will spike all the way to red. And again, you're hoping it will spike when you're asking it to. So a trick with this, if I were you, I would put one of these on one side of the room. I'd put the other on the other side of the room. Maybe this one is lighting up. You know, it's spiking to red. And you can say, all right, I see you over there. You know, hello. I will walk into the other side of the room and making the other K2 light up, the other EMF go up, and then see if they'll follow those rules that you're establishing. That would be really neat if you're really communicating with them in that way. And we've had success with that too. Now a note on these. 
If I were you, I would hold it kind of flat in the palm of my hand. You're more than welcome to walk around with it if you want to. Just don't wave it around too much. Definitely don't shake it. If you shake it, you're going to get a false reading. So that's why I would just keep it pretty flat and still, just so I know that if it's spiking, I know that I'm not making it go off. You want to be sure that it's paranormal. So I just hold these pretty flat. Okay, so everybody's going to get two of these. And you can clip your walkie-talkie to your person if you want to. You can clip it to your, your pocket or, yeah, both of you did that. Just make sure. You're going to have a lot of equipment to hold since it's just groups of two. Whoever wants it for this group, anybody? <laughs> and if your hand is sticking out, I'm going to hand it to you. So it doesn't matter to me. Okay, how are you feeling so far? Feeling good? Okay, great. So, in that case, I'm going to introduce more equipment. Uh, does anyone know what this is? It's not a recorder. It looks like one. This is a spirit box, a voice box, a ghost box. Um, now, this is used to communicate with the spirits. You're going to hear a response in real time. This is just a glorified radio, essentially. Um, there are two buttons that are important here. But this is just establishing an energy source that allows the spirits to communicate with you through. Spirits are basically energy, so it's easier for them to come through on this than it is to, say, touch you or something, right? So the two buttons that are important, I'm going to come around and show you where they are. It's going to feel a little silly, but you're going to be in the dark by yourself, and you're going to appreciate that you know where these buttons are. So the button, the first button, I'm just going to go group by group. Tiny power button right here. See that? And then the sweep REV. Sweep reverse right here. Those are the only buttons you need to pay attention to. Tiny power button. Okay? And then sweep REV. Sweep reverse. Okay? So tiny power button right here. Come around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. You don't want one of these? Great. That's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't have two spirit boxes going off at one time. It'd be too much noise. <laughs> yeah, it'd have to be really loud. How loud does that get? Can I hear it? Oh, that's fine. That's probably as loud as they go. So none of them get very loud. You can buy external speakers for the spirit boxes, but the reason they don't get too loud is because it's distracting. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be too loud. It would interfere with other people's evidence, but that's totally fine. That's, that's quite enough. Good. Thank you for playing that for me. Yeah. Um, so uh, the way that this works, you just heard it once you turned it on. But I'll turn this one on. It's a radio. Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to press sweep reverse. You hear it? It's sweeping through all of the radio stations. It's like your car radio seeks through the radio stations. It's the same thing. So you're hearing it sweep through. Now, you're going to hear the occasional interference. I just heard some of it. You're going to hear the occasional, like, ah, oh, eat. You're going to hear, like, a little country twang come through a little bit. And you know that that's the radio. What you're listening for is a vocalization that will extend past the length of one change of a frequency. It will overlay multiple channels. So you're going to hear a response that is going to be a little bit louder, usually. Would you say that it's louder? Yeah. I say that normally it sounds a little bit louder and different, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be broken up. Okay? So you're listening for a response, maybe just one word, a phrase, a sentence, that will overlay multiple sweeps. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. This does not record on its own. Uh, if I were you and I heard a spirit respond to a question I asked, I'd want to hear it again. If I were you, I would record on my phone at the same time that I'm using my spirit box. So a lot of people just use the voice memo app, and they record on there, and it seems to work really well. So I would record if I were you. If I were you, I would have a spirit box session. I would get with my group, with my partner, my group. Um, I would maybe sit on the floor. This has a little kickstand in the back, so you can kick it up, set it down, set my phone down, press record, and then start asking some questions. Um, now, a note on recording. We're in a city. There's some external interference. If you hear, for example, we had a group investigating. They were asking yes or no questions, and some guy on the street yelled, yeah. And then they listened back, and they thought it was a ghost. And it wasn't. It was a drunkard on the street. So if you hear a noise that's from outside, note that, right? Say out loud, oh, that was some guy on the street. 
right? If you shift your weight and the floorboard creaks, say, oh, that was just me. I moved my weight, right? Make sure that you note those things because when you're listening back, you're going to be listening for any little sound, hoping that you're going to hear a ghost. So it's good to know that it's not a ghost. So you can debunk it on your own. Another note, don't whisper. If you whisper, you're going to think that's a ghost, but it's just you whispering, okay? So another note on this, I'll go ahead and hand these out, but another note on this here. Is it on? That is not on. Okay. So, and it's up to you. So the tiny power button and then tiny sweep reverse. So you press the power and then you press sweep reverse and then you ask your questions, okay? And you're welcome to leave it on. It's fully charged. Um, it's just a little bit distracting if it's sweeping through the whole time. So if I were you, I would just have that established session where I'm asking questions. Um, another note on this, especially if you're a first-time investigator, it's going to feel that's somebody throwing trash away in the dumpster. <laughs> I heard that too. That's a mellow mushroom employee. They eat the pizza restaurant. Um, you're going to feel a little bit weird. You're going to feel a little kooky asking questions to a seemingly empty room. You're going to feel like you're asking questions to the air. It's going to feel really weird. While you're here tonight, lean into it, right? You're here for one night, just go all in. Uh, if I were you, I would ask a question and I would wait like 10 seconds for a response. And then I would ask the question again and I would wait again. Uh, I would ask a question in a different way as well. But ask them interesting questions while you're here. Um, another piece of advice that I have is if you feel like you've exhausted all of your questions, have a conversation amongst yourselves. Um, I had this group that was investigating, they weren't getting anything all night. They were in the lower levels and there was a teddy bear in the lower level. So one of them started talking about the teddy bear and one spoke up and she said, well, I didn't have a teddy bear when I grew up, I had a stuffed lamb. And she started to describe this stuffed lamb and all of the equipment in the room started to go off. And that was so cool because it was like, finally a spirit felt comfortable with her. Maybe they related to her on this, maybe they too had a stuffed lamb and then they wanted to talk to her. So that was really neat. So if you feel like you've exhausted your questions, just have a conversation amongst yourselves. You can also be quiet in there. I'm a quiet investigator personally, but if I were you, I would just keep talking and maybe something, you'll say something that will strike a chord with them. Um, yeah, all right. Another thing is to walk into a room and introduce yourself. If I were you, I would create a rapport with these spirits. Treat them like human beings. Treat them like someone on the street that you wanna befriend. Um, walk into a room and introduce yourself. Uh, pay them a compliment, right? That's a good way to make a friend. Pay them a compliment. Say, this is a beautiful house you have here. I heard you had parties. You know, what did you serve at this party? When I have a party, this is what I serve. Create a rapport with them. And it's more fun that way too. So definitely do that. All right. Next up, well, first of all, you have everything that you're responsible for tonight. This is all of the equipment that you're going to be bringing around with you from level to level for each rotation. And it's what you're responsible to bring back at the end of the night. Uh, during the debrief. So I have to make sure that I have all of the equipment back at the end of the night. But I do have some last minute uh, pieces of equipment. These are stationary pieces. So this is an EDI. This is an environmental detection instrument. Uh, this is three pieces of equipment in one. So this is measuring ambient temperature. That's what this digital read is at the top. To be honest, it's not that interesting. If it has a big spike or a big decrease, that would be noteworthy. You can also ask a spirit if they can change the numbers maybe, but I wouldn't spend too much time with that digital read. This also is measuring EMF, just like your K2 is measuring EMF. It'll light up blue when it's sensing that. What we're really using this for though is the geophone that's built in. This is measuring seismic activity. So I'm going to set it right here. Now, would you stomp your foot for me? Did you see it light up at the bottom? I'm barely tapping on this island right now, and it's still lighting up. It's pretty sensitive, okay? So those orange lights at the bottom are what's measuring the seismic activity. I'm going to be putting this in a place in the house where we get a lot of reports of footsteps. If you're hearing something that sounds like footsteps or a floorboard creaking, go out and see if this is lighting up. Another tip for you with this, ask the spirits to imitate you. I ask that you don't stomp while you're up there. This is going to be set in the main level, and there will be people below you investigating. But it's going to be set on a staircase. You can rap on the stair, on the railing of the staircase. Maybe you'll knock four times, and you'll ask the spirit to knock back four times. Maybe you won't hear a knock, but you'll see this light up four times. You can also do the shave and the haircut. The 
and see if it'll respond. It'll finish out the, the last two beats. That would be neat too, and we have had success with that. So try that. Ask them to imitate you if you want to. Just a tip. Okay. Last but not least, usually everybody's favorite piece of equipment. What's this? Anybody? This is a REM pod. If you're a Ghost Adventures fan, you've probably seen these. Yes, it is. Okay. So the way that this works, I'll go ahead and turn it on. And there are three REM pods. So there's one at each level of the house where you'll be investigating tonight. Again, this is a stationary piece of equipment. I asked Are you seeing how it's working? I'm going to reset it. Oh, I don't know if that was paranormal or not. Okay, it's fine. So, that was eerie. Uh, <laughs> the, the way that this works is this is emitting its own electromagnetic field around the antenna. When something breaks that field, as it just did, it lets you know through lights and sound. So. Yeah, a lot of people do. So because it's the consistent green, I think that it needs a battery change. Now it stopped. Well, Devin's watching. If she thinks it needs a battery change, she'll come in and change the battery. We'll make sure that this works for you before we set it out. Now it seems fine. <laughs> I'm a little weirded out. <laughs> cool. Okay. It could be paranormal, but that's the way that this works. Um, if you walk into a room and this is already going off as it just was, ask a spirit to back away from it. Count down from 10 and ask them to back away when you get to 1. If it's not going off, ask, count, down, count uh, down from 3 and ask the spirit to approach the REM pod, see if they can get it to go off. We also have children's spirits on this property. This lights up and it makes noise. Make a game out of this. If you're good with kids, try to invite them to play with this piece of equipment. Um, it, it's, a, it's a good idea. It makes colorful, colorful uh, visuals. All right, so I'm going to turn this off. That was exciting. Um, the REM pod doesn't always go off, so that was cool. Okay, does anybody have any questions at all regarding the equipment or how tonight's going to work? No? All right, great. So I'm going to grab this EDI, and we're going to head on into the mansion. We're going to have our condensed ghost tour, and then we'll get to investigating. Actually, before we go in, I'll give you, I guess, some tips in the, in the house, but I'll go ahead and give them to you now. I just gave you a bunch of really cool equipment, and I'm glad that you get to use it tonight but you are your best investigative tool, right? Pay attention to what's happening to you. Sometimes people's best evidence that they walk away from happens to them It's their own experience. Pay attention to what you're feeling, smelling, and hearing tonight. A reason that we turn the lights out is because most people are not going to see something paranormal while they're here. They're going to have a different type of experience, smell, hear, or feel something. So if you're having one of those experiences, speak up. Tell everybody in your group that you're having that experience. Maybe he can debunk it for you. Uh, maybe he's having the same experience. Bring it up at the end of the night because it could be paranormal. Maybe we can debunk it, but it could be paranormal. A note on that too, if you walk into a room and you feel drawn toward, toward a certain corner, grab your equipment and head toward that corner. Pay attention to what's happening to you. Um, if you feel uncomfortable heading toward that corner, hang back and take pictures of that corner. But don't write off how you're feeling. Um, another note on pictures, take pictures while you're here. Some of our best evidence is photographic evidence. And if you take no other tip for me tonight, take more than one photo at a time. Use the live photo capability if you have it, or take photos in bursts. It's so much easier for us to debunk to try to prove something as being paranormal if we can see it in motion or in a sequence. We're sent photos of strange shadows all the time. And people ask, is this paranormal? And it's like, I don't know. Was anybody else in the room? Is someone standing there? I don't know. So if you take more than one photo, it's a lot easier for us to give you an answer. It's easier for you to say that this is strange if it appears in one photo and not the rest, right? So definitely take more than one photo at a time. But even with your phone on airplane mode, you can still take photos, and I recommend it. Okay, those are my only two apps with other tips. We'll head into the house. Let's go.
welcome inside the Sorrel Weed House. It's a strange production coming into the dark basement. I recognize that. Uh, we will go upstairs and you'll be able to see the beauty of the home, but welcome. Uh, this mansion was constructed in 1840. It was built for Francis Sorrel as a wedding present to his second wife, Matilda. Those are two spirits you can try to reach out to tonight while you're here, Francis and Matilda. Now, while the Sorrells were living here, this lower level where we're standing now, this was their slaves' working quarters. They did have probably up to 15 enslaved house servants while they were living here. So this big room that we walked into, this was the kitchen. All of the fireplaces in the lower level were used for cooking. So while you're down here, if you're getting equipment to go off, maybe it's the spirit of a slave. Ask some questions to those slaves. If you're getting equipment to go off, it could also be a soldier. The Revolutionary War in Savannah was fought right outside in what is now Madison Square. And during the Revolutionary War, the British officer's barracks was right here on this property before this house was here. This also happens to be where those British officers died. Does anyone have a guess as to where their bodies are today? They're underneath us. So while you're investigating in this lower level, you're walking over their scattered remains. They're still underneath this house today, and we do have communication with them. We believe that some of them still reside here. So if you're getting some equipment to go off, perhaps it's one of those soldiers. Now our very first paranormal recordings actually come from the slaves themselves while the Sorrells were still living here in the 1840s and 50s. Uh, the slaves were going to the family and they were telling them that they were seeing shapes as well as creatures with white legs and red tails. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Creatures with white legs and red tails? The British, yeah, the red coats. Sounds like the officer's uniforms. Yeah. Um, they were also seeing shapes. We take shapes to mean shadows. Our most active entity down here has been an entity we refer to very simply as Shadow Man. Shadow Man is a very tall and thin three-dimensional looking shadow, meaning he's featureless, but he appears to have mass. Shadow Man can be seen and experienced all over the lower level, but most commonly he's seen captured in the footage pacing in the breezeway. He's seen or captured walking back and forth, as if he's keeping guard, perhaps. So we do think he's a soldier. We don't have too much more information on him. If I were you, I would spend some time in that breezeway. We'll have a lot of activity in that breezeway. There is a chair at the end of the breezeway that you are more than welcome to sit on. That chair and has been put there for the investigations. Ask Shadow Man some questions. Reach out to the slaves, whoever might be there. Um, so spend some time in the breezeway. If I were you, I would leave my equipment behind. And I would go sit in that chair by myself. I would close my eyes. I would try to center myself and have my own experience while there. A lot of people get personal experiences while they're in there. They have emotional, empathic responses and that type of so try that if you want to. Bring your equipment back there too. Just that's what I would do. I would leave my equipment behind and try to have an experience on my own. So try that if you want. Now we're going to head to that back room next. There's a handle on the left side door. You can pull it toward you. You can head in there. I would love these oil lamps out. So it begins.
we are 19th century slaves. I mean, what a cool um, experience. So after you mentioned they come to the lawyer here, how do they have family maybe? The lawyer is here to mainly try to do stuff for the slaves. That's what we do this year. I also have had on the floor one time. I had all 20 of my guests on the floor and my back to the fireplace. So they all watched the cast iron skillet on the left side of that fireplace move by itself. Even though you can't touch the burn to water in here, especially over here to start a travel, you can ask the spirits to touch it. So ask them to move tangible objects. That would be really neat. That's the only thing that's freaked me out in this house, is watching tangible objects move by itself. So try it tonight while you're here. Um, I will also say that in this room, I have had consistent reports from mediums, people who can see and communicate with spirits, that there's a little boy in here. Now we've heard that his name is Bobby, consistently. I feel confident giving you that name because I've heard it so many times. Um, every time I've heard about Bobby, he spends sitting on the fireplace waiting for his parents to finish their jobs for the day. So we believe that he's the son of slaves and a slave himself. I think he's maybe about eight years old. He sometimes is quiet. So while you're in here, you have the equipment go off. At least you have a name to throw out there. Maybe it's not Bobby, but maybe it is. It's at least easier if you have somebody to throw out there and try to Obviously, you want to earn a better place. Before we walk into the next room, a note on these kids. Apparently, kids in this house who we believe really like to see people in the race. If you have your favorite pair of earrings on, maybe take them out and put them in your pocket. They sound like a scare tactic. We have so many people all the time leaving this property and ask us for their earrings back if we really wanted them and we don't return them. sit on and I would recommend it while you're in here. Um, it's old, you're going to sink a little if you sit there, but you can sit. Okay, so as I told y'all, this lower level was the slaves working quarters, but there was a time that this room served a different purpose. Between 1845 and 1850, this was the medical office of Dr. Frank Sorrell. Frank was one of Francis's oldest sons. He wasn't a regular doctor. He wasn't practicing general medicine. He was a trauma surgeon. This was a makeshift operating room for five and a half years. And Dr. Sorrell Frank was a gifted trauma surgeon. He had the lowest mortality rate in the nation. But the lowest mortality rate in the nation in 1845 was 51%. He lost over half of his patients. There was a lot of death that occurred in this room. We believe that this is the most actively haunted room in the entire home. It's also the most physically active, meaning people feel things in here more often than the others. So pay attention to what you're feeling in here. Now, I don't think that Dr. Sorrell is here. I don't think Frank is here. Maybe he is. Reach out to him tonight if you want to ask him some questions. I do believe that the spirits of his former patients still linger here. So if you're getting some equipment to go off, maybe it's one of his patients. The majority of surgeries he was performing were amputations and the removal of bullets. So if you think you're reaching out to, you're being able to communicate with one of these patients, ask them if they were here for an amputation. You know, ask them specific questions like that. He was also seeing some locals who were falling off their horse and carriage and getting trampled by their horse and carriage. So ask them if they're here for that. But he was a trauma surgeon. You can talk to him about that. Talk to those uh, patients. Now, this over here is a 19th century wheelchair, perfect for a doctor's office. It has a REM pod on it. Ask whoever might be sitting in that wheelchair to make the REM pod go off. 
ask them to move the wheelchair. This wheelchair we haven't had for even a year yet, and it's moved several times during tours. Never during one of mine, not yet. It's always been a really slight movement, uh, so slight that you can't even see it in the video. There's a camera right up here, but you can hear the squeak of the wheel in the back and the two front wheels when they roll over the brick. So pay attention to what you're hearing in here, because it could be the wheelchair moving. Ask whoever might be sitting on it to move it, roll it toward you, or roll it away from you. Um, now, another note in here, we have those kids, as I already mentioned. There are a lot of playful entities down here. We believe at least three children. And one of these kids, we believe, is a little girl who loves to play hide and seek. Now, I hear myself say that during this little tour. I, too, hear that it sounds like the plot line of a bad horror movie. Right? A little <laughs> ghost girl who plays hide and seek. It sounds like I'm making it up to scare you. But we have so many people report to us feeling their ankles touched, their shoelaces played with, pokes in the back of the leg, and it's most often happening to them when they're sitting on that sofa or when they're standing near a piece of furniture. We believe her name is Sarah. We believe that Sarah is hiding underneath these pieces of furniture, and she's letting you know that you found her by tugging on your shoelace or by grabbing you by the back of the ankles. But when you're touched by a ghost or a spirit, it does not feel like a human touch. Feel a human touch while you're investigating here tonight, it's the person you came with trying to scare you. Okay? It does feel like cobwebs that are brushing your skin and you can't get rid of them. It feels like a loose hair you can't find, a bug crawling up your skin, a feather brushing over it. Those are ways guests most often describe it. Other times it can feel like a warm sensation, maybe like someone's holding up a lighter just to a patch of your skin. Other times still it can feel like pins and needles to the point where it almost itches is the way most guests describe it. So pay attention to what you're feeling, especially if you sit on the sofa. Now play hide and seek with her while you're here. Count down from 10 and have your group spread out around the lower level. Um, it's fun and she's usually pretty eager to play with guests. Play hide and seek, have a seat on the sofa or go spread out and see if you can play with her tonight. Um, Another note in here, uh, another note on feeling things. If you walk into a room and you feel cold or dizzy or sad or different, walk back out of the room. That's a good way to test if it's paranormal or not. Thresholds are a real thing in this field. If you've crossed another threshold and that feeling goes away immediately, it could be paranormal. If it follows you back to your hotel later tonight, it's probably just you. So that's a good way to test it out. But walk back and forth from room to room and see if the feeling follows you or not. That's a good way to test it out while you're here. So in here, you could be reaching out to a patient. You could be reaching out to whoever might be sitting in this wheelchair. You could reach out to a slave as well. This was used for dry storage for a while. Or you could be reaching out to one of those kids. So this is probably the most active room. So have fun in here. Um, go ahead and push through those double doors. I'm going to blow out these oil lamps and we'll head upstairs.
Okay. So it's colder in here. The AC was running earlier, so debunked. <laughs> yep, that was from the AC, which we turned off because we don't want any interference from any technology or anything. So we turned off the AC, but it was running like all day. So it definitely is colder in here. I feel like too, not very normal. All right. So in here, these are the parlor rooms. These are the rooms where the Sorrells parties would have taken place. This house was the party house of Savannah during its time. Everyone wanted to come to these parties. While you're in here, have a party. Stir up the energy of those parties. Even with your phone on airplane mode, you can still play music. I ask that you don't play music too loudly, because there are going to be people, be people below you, and again, you don't want to be disruptive or interfere with your evidence. So play music in here, dance around in here, Talk to them about what you like to do at parties, what you like to drink, maybe ask them if they were drinking, all that. So while you're in here, oh, also, the piano is back here. Um, we had some success with this. So recently, quick story, we had a, a woman and her son who came to investigate on the property. He was classically trained on the piano. So she was in a study, and he was in here by himself. And he was confronting whoever might be by the piano. He was asking them to play a C note. And he didn't hear anything, but he asked again, can you play a C for me? And then his mom ran into the room and was like, what are you doing? They told us not to touch the furniture. And he was like, what? And she goes, you touched the piano. I heard you touch the piano. So he didn't hear it, but she did from the other room. That was really cool. So while you're in here, I ask that you don't touch the piano, but ask a spirit to not play a full song maybe, but play a few notes. Ask them to play a specific note. It's our running theory now that people who are classically trained, who are musically inclined, do have evidence with the piano. So if you if you have that background, use it tonight. If you have a medical background, use that tonight. If you have a background working with kids, use that. And there's a lot of different people in here, so use your own strengths. But yeah, the piano has gone off, so that would be neat. Um, a note on here too. Uh, these mirrors, take pictures in these mirrors, this one and the one in the ladies' parlor. Some of our best paranormal evidence is photographic evidence in these mirrors. So definitely uh, pay attention to those and take more than one photo at a time. Um, while you're in here too, just so you know, uh, these were where their parties were taking place. When you would first come to a party, you would feast for the first part of the party. There'd be a huge banquet table spanning the length of both rooms. Once you've had your fill of that food and drink, banquet table was removed, a band was set up, everybody would dance for hours and hours. After the dancing, at that point, the men and the women would retire to their separate rooms. So that room back there is the ladies' parlor room, and this room is the gentlemen's parlor room. These pocket doors would have been shut in between for privacy between the two genders. So everybody has both genders in their group where they're investigating tonight. Separate by gender if you want to. Have the gentlemen in here. Have the ladies in there. Have the ladies in here and the gentlemen in there. Switch it and see what happens then. Ask the spirits to dance with you. Right? Separate your group by gender if you want to. Ask that you don't close the pocket doors. They're very hard to move anyway. Um, but separate by gender if you want to. Just another tip. So stir up the energy of those parties. Play music. Dance around. Separate by gender. Um, I also will say that these were their most beautiful rooms in the entire home. These were their public rooms. So it wasn't always used for a party. If you're in here and you're playing music and you're dancing around and it feels inappropriate to you, if it doesn't feel like it's the right vibe that you're trying to create, maybe you're not walking into a party. If the Sorrells had a loss in the family, they would have held their wake in these rooms. Maybe you're walking into a wake tonight. Maybe you're walking into an empty room tonight. Maybe you're walking into a room where the family is simply hanging out in their living room. Right? You never really know what you're walking into. I would start out by playing music and trying to drum up the party, but if it feels inappropriate to you, abandon that idea and try something else. Okay. So we're going to head into the ladies' parlor. I'm going to turn out this light as well. I'm going to tell you the main story of the house in that room, and then we'll get started. So this is the ladies' parlor, and there's a REM pod on the sofa.
breath and the atmosphere. Sit down, stand up. Um, it could probably be a lady. Um, also, the kids would have been in here with their mothers. So you might want to reach out to some kids in that term specifically. So this is a haunted house. <laughs> you were expecting some tragedy. You already know about the Revolutionary War. You already know about the surgery. But there was some familial tragedy as well. Now, March 27, 1860, the Sorrells were planning their big spring event, another one of these large, luxurious parties. And Matilda, the lady of the home, she wanted to know how preparations for this party were going. In order to find out, she would have simply found her most trusted slave, and she would have asked her how her preparations going. But on this night, she couldn't find that slave. Her name is Molly. And Molly's bedroom is across the way. The final location, the third location we're going to be investigating tonight, is the upper level of the carriage house. That was the slave's living quarters. All of the slaves would have lived there, but Molly had her own bedroom. Okay. Every time I bring you over, whoever that group may be for that rotation, I will bring you there personally. I'll turn the light on. I'll tell you a little bit more about it every time we go over there. But on this night of March 27, Matilda can't find Molly to ask her about preparations. So she's looking all over the house. The last place that she thinks to look for Molly is Molly's bedroom. She does find Molly there in her room. She also finds Francis, her husband, in Molly's bed with her. And we can take an educated guess as to what Francis was doing in Molly's bed with her. But it's important we keep in mind that Molly was a slave and Francis was her slave owner. It is very doubtful that she had a choice. Matilda, having seen this, was devastated. Not only was this her husband, she and Molly were said to have been quite close. Molly was essentially Matilda's right hand. Matilda ran down the steps from the carriage house. She ran back into the mansion. She went up to the third floor above us, where she locked herself in her bedroom. And then she came out to the third story balcony. And she tumbled over the ledge of the balcony. Matilda fell head first. She landed in the courtyard outside, which at that point was four feet lower than it is today, and was made of black slate tile. Needless to say, she passed away that night. Just about two weeks after Matilda's loss, again, nobody could find Molly. Again, they're looking all over. Again, the last place they looked for Molly was Molly's bedroom. Again, they found her there. But this time, she was hanging from a rafter in the ceiling of her bedroom. But because Molly was a slave, she was considered property and not a person. Thus, there was never an investigation that took place into Molly's death. Very simply written off as a suicide, and they didn't bother asking anyone. We in this house pretty unanimously believe that Molly was murdered. We know from records Molly was only four foot eleven. The rafters in the ceiling of her bedroom are pretty tall. You can see them for yourself when you go up there. The original rafters are still there. It's also probably worth noting that historically hanging was a white person's way of killing someone else. There's a lot of mystery that enshrouds both of these women's deaths, though. I can't tell you exactly what happened to Molly. I can't tell you exactly what happened to Matilda. Matilda lost three children. She lost her sister. She was basically contracted into this marriage with Francis. His first wife was her sister. Right? She was uh, thrown into this marriage. She struggled quite a bit. It's been documented that she had depression. But I can't tell you that Matilda jumped over that balcony. I can't tell you she wasn't pushed. Now, her death uh, is recorded as an accident that she fainted over that balcony. I can tell you she's buried outside of their family crypt in an unmarked grave. There's no reason for her to be buried that way unless it was suicide. It was so highly stigmatized. She would have been allowed to have been buried with the rest of the family. So most people come to conclusions of murder for Molly and suicide for Matilda. I can't tell you exactly what happened though. And you're welcome to ask them those questions tonight. You are welcome to reach out to whomever you would like to reach out to while you're here. You are welcome to ask them interesting questions while you're here. What an opportunity to talk to people of a different era. But while you're here, I ask that you be respectful. I have one rule, and it's respect. Respect for this house. This is first and foremost an historic home museum. Respect for each other, and respect for the spirits. I ask that you please do not provoke these spirits just for provocation's sake. Right? We work very hard to be respectful to them so that they're respectful to us and to our guests. We could not hold this event if we felt that we were putting you in harm's way at all. 
if you provoke these spirits, you might hurt that for us, right? We don't want to provoke them. We treat them very nicely, and we ask that you represent us well here tonight while you're investigating on your own. It's a very simple rule, okay? And you have, anybody have any questions at all regarding equipment, names, refreshers, stories, anything at all? Feeling good? The furniture. So the furniture is not original to the Sorrells. They took their furniture with them when they moved out in 1862. But it's all 19th century furniture. It's all from the 1800s. It's all from Savannah, and it's very particularly laid out. We do think that the mirrors may have been original. We do think that they have been here since the Sorrells lived here, these mirrors. So these are two pieces that we do believe are original. But the floors are original. The trim around the ceiling, the ceiling medallions, the doors, all of those are original. So if I were you, I'd set my equipment down on the historic floor, on the original floor. I would even lie down on the floor and see if I can experience something myself. A note on this door, if you don't open it wide enough, it'll close on its own. It's not a ghost, it's just a historic door. And you're welcome to keep these doors closed or open, ask the spirits to close them if you want to. That's up to you personal preference. The only door that I ask you to keep shut is the one that leads to the staircase across the hall, just so we have an extra barrier between the two levels. Other than that, leave the door open or close them, whatever you want to do. Okay. Any questions? Feeling good? All right. So uh, let's start with the group of seven up here in the party room. So we'll, we'll get the party started with you guys, and then everybody else is going to bring down to the lower level, drop the group off, and bring the group over to the carriage house. Okay, great. All right, happy investigating. So I'm going to give you 25 minutes. This light, we're going to head across the hall. Okay. Uh, I was just saying. <laughs>
And I'm going to do some recording. I'm going to turn this on. Hello, good evening. My name is Virginia. Here's my son. His name is James Try number four. I am very happy that I have a chance to come here to visit you all. I will be your guest tonight. Thank you for having us. This room is the surgery room. That's what I was told. And um, Dr. Frank, hmm. is there any spirit here would like to communicate with us? Have a tap on the chair, on the door. Oh, hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. My son is very interested in doing paranormal investigation. And this is his first experience. So, he's pretty excited. Would you mind give us your name? You want to tell us your name? And this room, I believe they told us, was the um, food preparing room. I'm stepping into this room and I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Virginia. This is my son, James, the friend of the four. Would you like to introduce yourself as well? Give us your name. There's a box in there. Um, you can touch it, you can do that. Um, you can hear it. So, let's turn it up. If there's something you want to say, if you place to say it, you can speak out and hear you. Um, so, I'm speaking to this, you say hello. Mm -hmm. 
what's it been? Would you rather talk to both of the men in this one? My name is Jack. I am happy that you I am happy to invite us into this home. Are we welcome here?
Any of this interesting, feel free to just kind of roll that light. It's, it rolls really easy. Is this what you all want to hang out at this party? Yeah.
and I'm going to turn on my phone to do some recording as well. If I can hear the voice, that would be great. Is there any more spirit here? Would you like to communicate with us? I'm stepping back in again. My name is Virginia. If any spirit would like to communicate with us, please tell us your name. Don't be shy. We can be friends. We have full respect. By all means. I would have. Hi. Hello. Good greeting. Thank you. Thank you. Is that any spirit, any more spirit would like to say hi to us? Um, we can hear you clearly. Would you like to speak a little closer to the voice box? Hello? Hi. This is another room I'm walking in. Oh, 
Is that how you feel right now, or how you felt last time? Yeah, if there's anybody in here with us, um, that box right there on the on the wheelchair, if you get close to it, it'll light up and make a lot of noise. Are there any kids here who want to play? If you're in here, um, if you want to get hit with us, you can, you can get close to that. I'm actually going to turn on this box. It's going to make a lot of noise, but I promise you that's just to help us hear you. Um, so if you say anything, say your name, um, and then we'll hear you. Ready? 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 Were you talking earlier? Did I hear you talking earlier? Me and my sister, we heard you um, saying something, so we're just going to go to you. By the way, my name is Alex. This is my little sister Katie. I'm with the other mom today. I'm Katie. I'm 13. Do you want to play a game of hide and seek? I like a good game. We always want to play hide and seek. It's so good for me. Yeah. 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 Is that you touching the box? Yeah, if it's beeping, it's because you're touching it, it's okay. Um, I can actually turn it off if you want me to. Um, I hear there are a lot of surgeries done in here. Are there any patients here with us? in this room. Have a lot of parties in this room. 
Ähm, I think that is a game. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I hide them, I listen to eat. Just, you know, or like, you know, like, can't get really heavily, you know, so it's like, I'm like, always like, 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 like,
Did you die in the war?
Music is the best. Music can give us a lot of healing in any way. It is a very, very beautiful house. And I thank you a lot us to come and visit and be your guests. And I also want to thank you for playing music in the voice box in the background. That's very nice. Stepping in to another entertaining room. The ladies area. This is the ladies area. Hmm. Is there any ladies who would like to introduce yourself? Tell us your name. Don't be shy. Like I say, I myself, I love to dance and music. 
and in power music.
is that with the flashlight in the chair, at work, if it moves, it'd be easier to notice. Yeah. Right? It's a lot easier. True. Bob is the one who says, Yeah. Bob. the equipment that you borrowed from me back up here. I step out of the building because I want him to do his thing. So tell them what you what you hear, what's the name, share the names, what they said. But in the carriage house, I heard one name, Morgan. Morgan. Paul is Molly Morgan. He said he was standing at Molly's um, out, outside the door. I mean, there could be a spirit here named Morgan. I just, knowing the history of the house, can't. You know, tell you exactly somebody who's named Morgan, but it doesn't mean that there isn't so somebody Robert, named Morgan. Here too, Robert is up here too. Was it? I think we have to record you. Robert? Robert? I've heard Robert a lot from these investigations. Again, I don't know who exactly to associate that with, but I have heard that consistently. And the other name that's up the end. Oh, you said you heard Matilda, right? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, that would make sense. That's obviously someone who lived here. So that's neat. And that was all through the spirit box? Yes. Was it when you were asking a specific question, or? Um, no, just... Did you just know. walk around? I'm the one who asked, tell us anything, and introduce right. yourself. And then I will walk away, and then stop talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, spirit box activity. What else happened for you guys? Um, anything else? I asked... Oh, upstairs here. I asked... Uh, he heard that um, they don't want to talk. No, because I asked, do you want to talk to us? And what did it say? He said, no, they don't. No, they don't. Then I say, I respect. 
and I snap out. Yeah. And I left him upstairs and he saw me. Right. He was up there having a boy himself. <laughs> <laughs> what happened once you left? Did anything, did the room feel different? Did anything change? Not really. Yeah. It's okay. Real person. Um, okay. Uh, well, cool. Thank you for being respectful to them if, if you were feeling like they didn't want you in there. Right. That's why that's nice. Yeah. Sometimes they don't want to be social, just like you and me. We all have bad days, right? Um, anything else for me, guys? Okay, cool. So spirit box activity. Oh, no, emotions. Oh yes, that the surgery room. I feel emotion when I I show my respect to Dr. Frank. I thank him for doing what he do to help many patients, and I have to shift. I have very heavy chest, I couldn't breathe, and I was very emotional. I had to step out, and she saw me. I'm not right, I just need to get up, get up, so I could breathe. There's a lot of trauma, a lot of sadness in that room, and he also heard from the boys' boxes, children boys, right? Children. You were hearing a little girl, is that what you said? A boy and a girl. A boy and a girl. Okay. So that was pretty cool at the surgery room that I have a lot of uh, um, energy in there that I felt. Yeah, there's some palpable energy in the surgery room. Room. Usually if, if somebody hasn't experienced or having it in the surgery room or in Malaysia. And I room. know they're gathering all around because I have those, I'm very sensitive to the energy with spirit, so that's why I say I have a respect for them. And yeah. I felt, I felt a lot on my left most of the time. Interesting. Okay. Nice. All right. Great. Yeah. An empathic response. That's a really good piece of evidence to get when you're on an investigation is to feel empathic, is to feel somebody else's emotions. And it happens a lot. When people come on tours or investigations. So that's a big one. Cool. Thanks. Okay. What about you guys? Post it out to you, room by room, however you want to do it. I think probably the first thing was in the carriage room, in Molly's room, the RM box. Uh, it went it off. Did it? It, did? it didn't do it again. That's okay. So I don't know if it was anything, but it did. The green light went off for a little bit. I did check the battery because I saw that you, yeah. something was going on when you were um, starting it up. Yeah. And it seemed fine. Um, I agree. It seemed fine. If it was consistently going off and it was a rhythmic, just the green light, that means that it's a batter, the battery is draining. Mm -hmm. um, but if it just went off but like one time, one, then. Yeah. That could be that someone broke the field. Right. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay. That was pretty much all of That's exciting. Yeah. That's, that's, all that really that's a big one. The REM pod, we almost took it out of the event. For months, we weren't having any activity with the REM pod. Um, so I'm always excited when it goes off. Were you asking anything specific? Were you all in the room when it happened? We were in the room. Yeah. And it, it was almost immediately when we like started. Um, oh. So it was like, it was like the first thing. And it's almost like someone was just acknowledging that you were there. Yeah. Neat. Okay. Cool. Great. Anything else? Not with the yeah. equipment, but with yourselves. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not really. Yeah. Sometimes we have like radio um, interference, yeah, interference we and the the study. The study. Yeah. Huh. More so than in the other rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, it, it just seemed louder, and music. it yeah, a lot more like this interference. Rooms. Yeah. Music. You had that too in yeah. the study. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. I mean, the radio shouldn't. It shouldn't be sweeping any differently mm -hmm. in one room versus another. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting to me. That yeah, they were saying that they were hearing music as well, and they were saying they were hearing it in the lower level. I think, mm -hmm. and we do have that a lot um, because the slaves would have been singing when they were working sometimes. At least that's what's believed. So people do hear music come through, but it's not like a broken up music, it's overlaying. So it's possible that they're able to manipulate uh, the radio mm -hmm. and be able to play a song through, or at least overlay multiple channels. So that's cool. Okay, that's something too, that you were hearing that. Yeah, I went to a feeling, uh, we do have a lot of hi and hello from, um, yeah. right? Yeah, hi and hello. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, that's it for me, guys? Okay, thanks. What about this group? So again, with the first floor, or the top floor, we had the music too. We thought maybe we were just picking up. Radio, radio. Yeah, radio. yeah. yeah. it was consistent. Mm -hmm. Not just a, it was a, you know, it's that one. 
I don't think we, so we changed our channels. Didn't have anything but on that for we talked try to find. There is one thing we found that if you walk across the floor, there's certainly that little table of jewels, so we had them bonk that. Which table? The lamp, so like when you walk in from the front the door on the right. Oh, yeah, yeah that floorboard by Because she walked by and we heard that, and I was like, that lamp just shake? And so then we were yeah, like walking around trying to make it do it. Like a certain shake. Debunking is the mark of a good investigator. Yeah, it's a board. <laughs> yeah, there's a loose board. Oh, we did get the spirit box that said hello. Yeah, yeah we did get a hello. In the, in the foyer? In the parlor, the men's parlor. Okay. Usually when we go out, I have a little laser grid that's really easy to roll, so I kind of, but we didn't get anything on that. Yeah, we don't know how success with that a lot. When we get down to the basement, though, mm -hmm. we had everybody. <laughs> The dark man. This is my second time getting my way. Um, so I brought my family this time. <laughs> um, everybody in that back behind the in the breezeway. Nobody likes that. We just yeah. found that when we got more than one or two people there, that we didn't feel so. Okay. And oh, we all, okay. So like my dad was like, "Oh, sit in the chair in the dark and see what happens." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so um, yeah. Smart idea in a horror movie, but um, yeah. at some point she came in and was talking to me, and he was next to me on my right, and I was still sitting in the chair, and she was on my left, oh, and we sorry, heard her we heard this like, like, oh. like, and I thought his stomach had growled, and I was like, Dad, are you hungry? And he goes, What are you talking about? Like, I didn't hear anything, like, but we both heard it. Heard it kind of sounded like a deep zipper, like it's like you know when you zip up yeah. something, it sounds like it was like a deep zipper, like a. Weird. Maybe like a it was a zipper. Zipper. I don't even know. It was weird. It was like a, and I was like, are you hungry? Like, I thought it was his stomach, but I don't know. Um, and then we, um, so she thought she saw someone hiding under the table, so we put out this, the spirit box over it, and we started talking. And what question did you ask? Oh, I asked, um, did you die in the ward? And we, all we all heard you. Mom, yeah, me and Katie, we all heard, um, I died. Very clearly. Like, I hope I have like, on here. If I please, please. Yeah. <laughs> the recording was I died. Like, me. I died. Like, clear as day. I died. Whoa. Whoa. And then you Maybe called radio and we're like, no! <laughs> 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 that happens sometimes. Uh, That's me, though. Then we got up here, and then did, she automatically just felt like, just, I don't want to go. I don't want so she sat on the stairs. Mm -hmm. um, the girls went back to the Molly's room, did a little session back there. I don't know what they had. I was sitting in front. It kept sounding like she was trying to come. I don't know. It there was like a like female's was... voice that kept, it was the same female's voice, but it was like kept kind of going, eh. like you just heard like a. But it was like the small same show. over and over again, which was weird. Like, I don't it, was, it didn't sound like radio sweep because, you know, with the radio sweep, you hear like different noises over and right. over. It was like the same. But it was, like, before it was through that same station again. And, um, but it was too quiet for us to really make out what it was. And then we did a yeah. little session in the front kitchen area mm -hmm. where we had some really interesting. Each of us said, Who is this? Is this Mr. Samuel? I first said, I got a response. Was we couldn't make it out. But it, why don't you? She you asked it. Why don't you? She asked it. Why don't you? It was kind of the same. But then we said, how many people are in here? And it said, two. Two. People ask that question a lot, and they get really good responses. I have to start telling people to do that. Yes, we did ask, what, who is here? I think we all heard something different, but again, we'll have to play that. I know we heard male and female voices. They hear a male. And then they different, but also consistent, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we went to Molly's room, though, it was just like an emotional experience. Like, me and my sister both felt like I feel like I need to cry. This <laughs> is awful. Yeah. That's one of the number one reportings up there. People need to leave this house because they walk in there and they feel emotional. When we first went there, four out of seven of us smelled bread. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I was there, too. And I didn't smell it. But yeah, yeah, they were like, it smells like a bakery. And all, half of us were like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I smell dust. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, Maybe they were baking bread. For bread, yeah. yeah. That was neat. It's cool that you were asking the questions and getting a response and asking it again, and they were still trying to come through. Cool. Yeah. 
with the no. bread too. When I, I was like, it smells like bread up here. Like I was trying to figure out where it was coming from. And before you said that was the kitchen, that was like where it was you smelling. Know. It was the, that area. That was good. Like, Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I laid down on the floor too, and like I had my head facing Molly's room, and I was just like, oh, that feels really heavy over there. I was just like, I don't know, maybe I'm just, you know. So I laid sideways and said it still was like so heavy, like on my right, like towards Molly's room. Like, heavy is a really good way to describe it. Yeah. Heavy. There are three recordings that I get consistently from her room. One of them is feeling a heaviness on your chest, like it's hard for you to breathe in her room, especially for petite women. I have that happen, and then the other is that people feel emotional. Mm -hmm. Alarmingly, we just sat up there for like yeah. 25 minutes, and it was just. It got better and better the more yeah, we waited. It, it did. Yeah. Yeah. There's a palpable energy in that room. You know, you walk in there thinking about her. You ask her questions. We talk about her and her story all day, every day. We're feeding an energy up there, and it's pretty easy for people to pick up on. And a weight is a really good way to describe what it feels well, I like. I know this is a common name, but I have to ask, is there a Jones? Or a Jones? Or something that's really a Jones? Or like a J? J. <laughs> that is your brother's name. <laughs> no, not that I know of. I'm Jamie, and I know that exactly I had domesticated. It was, a, it was a male's voice, too. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's what's what's your name? Name? Yeah. I said, what's your name? And it just came up, I was like, J. And like, was that? So we don't have good records of this place, of course. You know, we don't know many of their names or anything about them. Um, so it could be the name of a slave and we just don't have access to that information. But I will listen out for the other investigations yeah, if, if they're getting a J name. I'll follow you guys. Pay attention to it. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll pay attention to it. One time in the basement, um, we were like, you know, we're like in the basement and it was after you said, let's play hide and seek, I'm 13. Yeah, and you're like, I, I see, and then she felt like a... I love that you said that, too, because the kids feel more comfortable with kids, mm -hmm. or people who are closer to their age, and it's neat when we have kids come in, because they, they want to reach out to you, mm -hmm. and it's, I'm glad that it didn't freak you out or anything, because they're just no, trying to get attention. Like, she seemed like she was, like, more like the kids in that room, yeah. and I'm a nurse in that room, just, I... I I don't yeah. know, I can hardly stand me in there. Like it's, it's almost like home. you're feeling too different. different. Yeah. She's, she's like, like, she's like, like oh, it's like a kid. And like, I'm like, like, no, like, no, I got a girl. You're feeling like, like, patience and she's still like this. That's cool. Yeah. I felt like really yeah. She's like, oh, I'm really that room is very layered. Right, there's yeah. a lot of different types of spirits that have been in there at different times, and they all exist at one time now. But some people pick up on one layer, and some people pick up on another. And that was another thing too. When you said we moved to the basement, we moved down, and I thought that the group who was there before was still down there because I heard a woman talking. And I was like, oh, are they still down here? And I was like, hello. And then I was like, nope. No. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was, uh, and I was like, did you hear that? And she's going, what are you talking about? I'm like, did you? Did you hear I that? Know. And then I hear a clear woman say no, and I'm like, Mom, did you just say no? And she's like, No. And I was like, Okay, I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. You're going crazy. <laughs> if you're going crazy, what are we? Yeah. <laughs> um, when I asked you where the office was, like you were explaining something, and I kept hearing footsteps. Like oh, that was happening. Yeah, I kept hearing like you. I don't know if you could see in the live stream, but I kept like looking behind me because I kept thinking like someone's walking behind me. Yeah. And it sounded like someone upstairs, so I'm thinking I don't know if there's another tour going on. You know, I'm just like confused. And then that's when I was like, "Where's the office?" And you're like outside, and I just I don't know. I just and then you said the guy upstairs, but we were in the basement, so I don't know if the sound would travel that far. So people feel. I don't know if it's Shadow Man, mm -hmm. but for a long time we've said that Shadow Man likes to stand right behind guests. We think he's just interested in you, but people feel like there's someone hovering above them or standing right behind them. When they move, they hear footsteps following them. So maybe it's not Shadow Man, but that's consistent reporting mm -hmm. that people feel someone behind them, hear footsteps, and then there's nobody there. Just, I couldn't so, explain it. Like I, I kept, I was like, I swear, I hear like a person behind yeah, me. Yeah, that's a good way to define the paranormal. Something mm -hmm. that you can't explain, mm -hmm. right? It can't be explained right away by logic or by science, and thus we label this being paranormal. Not an exact science, but it's what we have now. So cool. Okay. Anything else from this group? No. That was a lot. Well, it was funny that you said if you have any musical background, any medical background, or any like group of kids. We have two teachers, but mom's a nurse, and we all play instruments. So, I love um, that. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. How cool. Wow. All right. This was a good night. 
you know, some some groups had more quiet times than others, and that's okay. That happens. Um, you never know what you're walking into, you know. So I hope that you still have fun, though. That everybody have a good time. Okay. Even if it is a quiet night, you're still in the dark in one of the most actively haunted locations in the country. Right? You're investigating in the middle of the night in that location. So I hope that you enjoyed yourself. It is a full moon outside. Yeah, and it's gonna storm tomorrow. So it was an exciting night. Um, thank you very much for coming. I do. Somewhere have to sneak behind you. Yeah. So I have business cards for you. Um, that has the link to the YouTube. It has our email address on it. I'll just set a stack down right here on this island. You can come grab one if you want to. Um, it has our email, so email us any footage that you have. If you find anything strange or remarkable in any of your photos, your videos, your audio recordings, note on the audio recordings too. If you want to listen back to those, I would sit in a dark room. I would have over-the-ear headphones on. I would close my eyes, and I would try to really listen in, and I would take notes, right? Um, if you're doing it when you're around other people, it can interfere. So it's just a, just a note. That's what I would do. And with your photos, uh, zoom in, increase the brightness, blow it up on your computer. You know, there's things that people miss all the time. So go through your footage with at your own time and then send it to us if you want to. We'd be happy to see any of it. And if you want a second opinion, just make sure to ask us and we'll write you back and let you know what we think. Um, the YouTube link is on there so you can go back and watch yourself, see the stars that you are. Um, our social media is on there, our website. You can always look at archival footage on our website and new evidence on our social media. You can weigh in and tell us what you think about it. And you can upload your own evidence there too if you want to. If you want to. And lastly, our trip advisor is listed on that business card and reviews help so much with this business. Uh, the majority of your ticket sales goes to the restoration of this property. It's a huge historic home preservation project. We really appreciate your contribution when you came here tonight. We hope to have you back again. Thank you very much. And it's fun to come back because then you know the house, you know what to expect, you know how the equipment works, and we love having repeat visitors. So thank you, you for coming back. The first time we came here. Really? So but you I, came back. I'm so glad you did. Back, you know. That makes me happy that you came back, even though you didn't get anything the first time. Well, I followed you guys, and I saw the other people. Too. Yeah, and they're getting stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. yeah we stuff tonight. You just never know. You did. You got a lot of stuff tonight. That's great. Well, thank you. Grab a business card if you want to. Don't if you don't want to. I'll go and lock the gate and uh, get some sleep. But thank you so much. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your time ahead. Yeah. 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 Battery. Battery. Yes, I was trying to read it and I was like, I know that font because I, because yeah. I've seen it. Yep. It's one of my favorite yep. Yep. But this That's is. Really <laughs> <laughs> warm in there, so like, it's probably not a good idea yeah. for this. <laughs> Have a good night.